This is Figure 11 Methods, it's Chapter 3, Sackers, Question Number 3. The volume of a rectangular prism B of X is given as this. Sketch the volume against X over an appropriate domain around to one decimal place. Okay, since I've got a calculator, I'm going to actually have a little look and see what it looks like. So bring up my keyboard. I'm going to pause this while I type it. Okay, there it is. Then I'll press execute. Just double check, minus 3x cubed, minus 2x cubed plus 13x squared, plus 33x minus 72, and I've got multiplications between the 2 and the x, the 13 and the x squared, and the 33 and the x, so that's nice. Now I'll open up a window, I've got things there, so I'll go zoom, I'll clear, okay, that clears my window. I take this and I drag and drop, and I do zoom auto, it will change my y values, okay, I can move it over here and have a little look. This represents the volume of a rectangular prism. So volume can never equal zero. It can never equal zero or negative. And over here, I can't have negative x's because that makes no sense. So really, it's only between here and here. So I'd like to find analysis, g solve root, and that will give me my x-intercepts. Don't care about that one. So I'm going from one and a half across two. 8. So 1.5 across to 8. That's what I should be graphing. So if I um, change from 0 to maybe 8. OK. Zoom auto. So my graph, I would draw over here and I'll see if I can get a graph up. OK, there's my graph. That's what I need to draw. I don't wish to show any of the graph less than 1.5 and greater than 8 because that makes no sense for our particular cuboid. Okay, state the domain of V of X or the domain is going to be square bracket 1.5 comma 8 square bracket. If the height is known to be this, so there is my height, 8 minus x, find a quadratic of ax squared. So I'm going to go back up here, take that. I'm going to fact, I'm going to, uh, okay. So if this is the height and this is the area, then this times the area should give me the volume. So I'm going to take that into a new line. So I might resize. Um, I'm going to put that in the top of a fraction and divide it by 8 minus x and if I select that and interactive transform proper fraction there is what my answer is so that's what that there is it's going to equal okay so that's i of x factorize that so I'll take that in a new line and interactive transform r factor so i might do that again and not do an r factor because it took out the common factor so i'll just do interactive transform factor and there it was so i've got x plus three and two x minus three or i could have written 2x minus 3 on 2 and x plus 3. Either is acceptable for part D. Use the factors to state the dimensions. Well, I know the height is 8 minus x. I could say the width is 2x minus 3, and that would make the height x plus 3. If you're going to use these factors, then you would say that the width was 2 x minus 3 on 2, and the length was x plus 3. These could be interchanged. State the cuboid dimensions and its volume of x equal 5. Okay, so if I go back over here and get the volume expression, that's the volume expression, copy, down here, paste, and option given x equals 5, and the volume equals x equals 5, and then the volume equals 168. So the volume is 168 centimetres cubed, and if it was 5, the length would be 8. The width would be 7. 
and the height would be 3. And state the dimensions if the volume was 10. Well, the volume can't. I mean, if the x was 10, x can't be 10. x can only be between 1.5 and 8. If x were 10, that would make the height negative 2, which doesn't make sense. So there's no answer to the last one.